Our next presentation deals with sales and revenue transformation. Joining me now is Vic Mehta, who is the founder and managing principal of Emoksha Consulting. Vic, take it away. Yeah. Thanks, John. And uh, thanks, everyone, for uh, joining this session. Um, so the topic of uh, uh, this session is sales revenue transformations, utilizing historical customer order data and predictive analytics. What essentially I will be discussing is that how we can capture customer behavior signals from existing sales orders. And in this age of you know, uh, big data, you know, how we can uh, still remain focused on data that actually matters and, and that's meaningful. It doesn't have to be a whole lot of data, but if it's meaningful, you can still extract uh, value uh, from that data. So, so essentially what we're going to be looking at is how just small number of features in your sales data can reveal so much about your business, uh, about your customers and products in order for you to tap into additional revenue potential that your customers have and you can create tremendous value for your sales and, and marketing teams. So with that, um, So just a little bit about uh, Emoksha Consulting. We are a data science and machine learning company. Uh, we essentially take anonymized transactions from organizations and we, by applying machine learning models, we help predict uh, future behavior, uh, events and outcomes uh, from the data. Uh, we have a number of clients in, in B2B, B2C uh, distribution space, uh, e-commerce, uh, financial services, and essentially we are focused on solving uh, a number of problems in uh, sales, marketing, operations, and, and risk management uh, using uh, predictive analytics. So the agenda for today is we're going to talk about a, a case study and this revolves around a big data approach that we, we took for a client and some of the problems we encountered along the way, uh, how we solved those problems, and by simplifying uh, the approach uh, that, that we had. Uh, then we'll have a discussion about the architecture of that uh, strategy, which I'm calling it a sales order strategy. Uh, how we implemented and applied that strategy, and uh, from a takeaway perspective, like you know, how when does it make sense to actually apply what uh, we did, and then what kind of outcomes you can expect uh, from this strategy, and most importantly, how can you you get started? How can you uh, benefit from it? So uh, the objective of the talk, uh, what I'm hoping is that, you know, is some of the takeaway for you from this session is that you can go back to your organization and it makes you think about the approach that your organization takes to extract value from your uh, existing customer data that you have available and basically help you devise a data strategy that in turn will uh, uh, that will turn into a, a effective sales and marketing strategy, uh, and then you can evolve that strategy at your own pace. Um, I do want to mention that uh, this session is not about acquiring new customers, but it's focused more on extracting value from your existing customer base. Uh, so before we uh, get started, um, I just want to get a sense of the audience. Um, so if you can answer some of these polling questions, there are actually two polling questions we'll have. Uh, what is the level of customer churn at your organization? So if you can uh, 
respond to that. Okay, so we have a couple of responses. There's a low, less than 25%, uh, very high one, and then uh, one don't know. So, okay, so that's good. Uh, let's move to the next question, John. Sure, what is the level of customer, oh, I'm sorry, do you understand the difference between the terms descriptive analytics and predictive analytics? Yes or no? So we have, yeah, I think uh, so that's good. So descriptive is, is focused more on looking at historical data. You're really looking at what has happened in the past, whereas in predictive, you, you're focused on what could happen in the future. Okay, so let's moving on. So just to give you uh, some context around the customer that we are talking about is a, a typical you know, retail distribution of B2C customer who has uh, e-commerce presence, there's a website there making sales, there's an also an inside sales team from a B2C perspective, uh, there's you know, sales and marketing team, and you have hundreds of thousands of customers and you have hundreds and thousands of products that you are selling. Uh, it's a competitive, uh, price competitive industry, um, likely with a high customer churn, with a lot of repeat customers that you are hoping to get business from, and you have internal systems, your CRM system, the ERP system, where you are, you are managing all the data uh, related to your uh, customer base. So I want to start by talking about the big data approach that a number of organizations uh, take today. Um, and what that approach entails is that you are, you know, the variety of data sources out there that you're trying to tap into in order to extract value. So whether it's, you know, sales order, inventory, there's a marketing website activity, Google Analytics, uh, you know, a lot of organizations are looking at weather data, customer service data, the social media. So there's a lot of data around us, and there's a lot of it, and it comes to you at a, at a, at a, with a lot of volume and, and with a lot of speed. And, you know, majority of the organizations are focused on you know, let's keep adding uh, more and more data and see what value we can extract uh, from that data. And it, it, it you know, it works um, in, in some context. In some context, it, it may not be the right strategy, and I'll, I'll show you that. So essentially what you're trying to get at is I need 360 degree view of my business, so I need to understand what value I can get from this uh, from these data sources. However, the problem becomes is that, you know, where once you have multiple data sources, before you can even get to any insights or analytics, you have to integrate them. Um, and in, in, in any given organization, all the data is never in one place. So you got data silos, uh, sometimes, before you can get to insights, uh, you know you may not even have the data available that you are uh, you are looking for to get the insights. You can't get to that data, 
Um, sometimes there are there are these large data warehousing efforts that that takes place. Uh, what I what I'm trying to say here is that there's a lot of time and effort that goes into uh, coming up with this big data approach. Uh, and you know, a couple of projects that I've been involved with, you know, a lot of focus gets shifted towards um, you know, especially large organizations. It, it's really about data engineering, and the focus is not on, on value creation because you're spending so much time, almost sometimes 60, 70% of your time is actually going on to you basically engineering side of data rather than value creation for business. So, so if you are able to get to that point where you're integrating data successfully and you're able to get to the insights you need, um, and I'll talk about this in the context of a customer that you know we have been working with, where we saw you know while after integrating data and, and doing that whole process, you know we came up with nice uh, dashboards and BI reporting and graphs and charts, and, and sometimes what happens is that from a sales and marketing perspective, uh, for executives, it, it makes sense to see those high level trends and patterns, but for people on the ground, you know, out there, you know, trying to sell stuff or who are uh, trying to run campaigns, and it, sometimes it's just not actionable enough to have that data at that, that, that level. Uh, that's where uh, predictive analytics come in, where you can really get down to each individual customer, each individual product, and you can start scoring the customer, start scoring your product, so that sales teams and marketing teams, they have the necessary insights to go down to individual customer and product and to be able to say, I know I can do X to impact this customer or this product. Um, so that's, that's, the, uh, uh, that's where we want to be uh, from an uh, actionable data perspective. So as uh, so, this is a, uh, a case study of a customer that we we have been uh, engaged with. Uh, essentially, their management was looking to when they brought us in. Their management was looking to integrate uh, data data points. Uh, they knew there were missing opportunities that existed in their data, and there's potential for extracting value. Uh, so they. They wanted us to focus on integrating their data sources, start connecting the dots, and start discovering value uh, from the data. Um, the, the challenge that we ran into while doing that was uh, we would sit down with the management and the sales team and the marketing team, and the sales reps would come in, and, and, and they would look at all the information that we would give to them. And they would they would like what they see, but you know later on we would learn that they were not using the information that was being given to them. Um, so it because we realized during this process is that they were not finding these dashboards and and, and nice visuals uh, not actionable enough. Uh, they were already running 200 hour reports to to run their business. And it, it's almost like a you know more data coming to you. It's almost like more data fatigue uh, for the sales and marketing team, and, and they are busy people. So um, so they were somewhat skeptical about you know uh, this outside consultant coming in and they are you know building these nice uh, views and uh, nice charts for us, but it, they were not finding it actionable enough. So we had to. Uh, actually go back to the drawing board and essentially come up with a strategy that simplifies the whole process. So rather than focusing on uh, you know, connecting the dots and bringing all these data points and presenting it to the sales and marketing team for action, uh, we needed to basically reset that strategy to focus on what's meaningful to sales and marketing team and 
we wanted to do something uh, with something that's readily available, easily available, and can we extract value out of that? The answer was the sales orders. What can we do from the sales orders? Um, So, so we came up with this uh, sales order strategy uh, for the sales and marketing team. Uh, essentially what we took is we, we took three years worth of sales orders. And essentially five features in those sales orders uh, where you have your item or a product that was sold, uh, category of product that was sold, who is the customer, and sale price, and the order date. So we took these are five uh, fields from, uh, from the database, and we took three years worth of data. So what I'm going to show you is, is how we were able to take those fields and, and turn them into really actionable information. And essentially what we are trying to get the answers to that the business is asking uh, for you know, a couple of questions they have. Uh, Basically, are we focused on the right customer? Are we selling to the right customer? Are we selling the right product to the right customer? Um, and how can we extract more value from our existing customer base? And customer churn was an issue uh, for this customer, so also looking at uh, customer churn as well. So by taking those uh, five sales data fields, what we did is that we converted those data fields into a uh, number of features. Um, so we segregated, uh, actually created more data fields like revenue, number of orders. Then we started to look at the frequency of purchase, um, rate of purchase change, uh, customer tenure, so essentially what we are looking for is for each of the variables that we define, like from, from a sale price, we can get revenue. From, number of, uh, uh, from the count of the sales orders, we can get number of orders. From the date field, we can get the frequency of purchase. So we started to look at the data this way, and then what we did is for each of these uh, variables that we are creating, that revenue, number of orders, and, and rate of purchase, customer tenure, is basically slice that, slice each of this by the totals, by the averages, by how recently that, uh, that uh, uh, dimension is uh, available and then the frequency of that uh, variable. So to give you an example, if you take the revenue perspective, so you can look at revenue and come up with you know, a total revenue over three years from that customer. Then you start to look at average revenue uh, per month from that customer. Then you start to look at recent revenue, let's say in this case, six months revenue. Uh, how is that revenue changing over time? So, so, so starting to look at every dimension, so, so you take the same approach to a number of orders, uh, frequency of purchase, and so basically you start creating all these variables. So what you are essentially trying to do is you're trying to create a unique customer signature. It's a behavior signature of your customer. It's, it's, it's hidden in your sales orders. That's what we are uh, trying to extract out of that uh, uh, sales order data. So once we have this sales order, uh, I'm sorry, once we have this unique customer signature, uh, let me just. All right. Um, so, so we started here. 
then we I just explained this process of creating those variables, which basically are capturing customer behavior. And by applying these predictive modeling techniques on, on these uh, additional data fields or behavior variables we created, you, you can turn that data by applying that data to, to different ways you can apply. You can turn that into a business strategy for your organization. So essentially what, what this uh, approach allows you to do is that you can take this approach, you can score each of your customers from a value perspective, like how valuable that customer is. Like in this case, um, sales team, you know, uh, they have a target of making, you know, 500 sales calls a month. Uh, you can really prioritize from a value perspective, this customer has this much value to the organization. So your sales call priority becomes based on this customer value score. Uh, from a marketing perspective, you can do loyalty segmentation based on the value score that's, that's being uh, provided. Uh, from a churn prediction standpoint, you can apply uh, a predictive model, predict the churn, and in, our, in this case with the customer, what we are doing is we're looking at high risk, high value customers. So, you know, once a month they, they look at it and make sure that if there's a need of them, uh, you know, churning, then they can do something beforehand to, you know, reach out to them or uh, make some kind of a retention offer so that customer uh, won't leave the organization. Um, then also from a cross-selling and upselling your products, looking at what makes sense uh, from a, a, you know, bundling your product and what should be the next best offer to an individual customer. Uh, so you can look at bundling your products that way. Uh, also looking at seasonality analysis, because we have data uh, that, that we have available. You can see which products are moving in which months. And you know, if there's a downward trend, one of the things a uh, client is doing is they are uh, looking at, you know, if there's a downward trend, then maybe there's a pricing adjustment that needs to be done. Um, and looking at discounting by segmentation, purchase propensity, like can we discount certain uh, uh, customers uh, based on their loyalty level to the organization? So, um, so essentially, we, by starting here with not a whole lot of features in the data, we end up here. So we don't need to capture any other uh, geography or demographics and you know there's a lot of other data elements that also come into play and I'll, I'll talk in a little bit about that as well but thank you this is the approach we took to to get from here uh, to here Actually, I'm going to come back to this. So, um, how this was implemented? Uh, we basically delivered a listing of uh, predictive scores uh, to you know, sales and marketing teams in the form of Excel files. Just, just simplify the whole process. Just, you know, here's all the listings and predictive scores at each customer level, at product level, and so you can make the right calls to the right customers. You, you know, if you are trying to get the customers back, then who should you be trying to win back? Uh, so really trying to get them to focus on what should be done from a strategy perspective uh, to be effective uh, in your sales and marketing process. Um, and, and in some cases, we did push the data uh, to a visualization platform, uh, which was helpful to them. But I, they like the uh, you know process of just sending out Excel uh, listings because they they can um, uh, sort it the way they want or they can play with the data however they want. So they they actually like that approach. So here are just some examples of 
you know, uh, some of the data uh, with, you know, you got these scores that are attached to the existing uh, data as well as the uh, prediction status of churn probability. And, and it's all coming based off of those customer behavior uh, uh, signals or, or, or signature that I uh, talked about. Um, Um, so by, by working with this customer, so we actually saw immediate results after we, we changed this approach. Um, our revenue was up uh, for that quarter uh, for the year as well as uh, year over year. It was up. Uh, but most importantly, the sales and marketing team saw it like immediate uh, benefit to them. And so we we had the buy-in from the sales and marketing team uh, because what they saw was their ability to do uh, micro-level analytic decisions. So essentially what that means, they can get down to each individual customer and product level and make decisions that they need to make, which they need, need in order to do their job. And then being able to strategize and, and qualify the right customers and the right products uh, for actions. And essentially, you know, it's, it's actionable information that they can ask themselves, can I do something? What do I need to do with this information? So that, those are the answers they, uh, they were starting to get uh, from this approach. Um, another thing was the consistency. Um, there's about uh, 25, individuals in the sales team. So if everybody is focused on a certain way of approaching their customer base, and there's a consistency in their actions, uh, which was uh, for the management, it, it's, uh, uh, it was, uh, they liked how their sales team was starting to approach. Um, so you're really focused on the increasing the quality of the sales rather than the quantity, because quality of the sales improves if you are focused on the customers who have higher value for the company, they have higher revenue potential, or, or they are purchasing more from the company. So, so you want to, if you're trying to win back a customer, you want to focus on customers who have higher value for the company than a customer who has a lower value. Um, and, and essentially, they saw the results like within a month and so it took us about three months to mature the process after a couple of discussions with them and we were able to operationalize uh, this process uh, in about three months uh, so that's after getting the buy-in from the executive team from the sales team and and it took us about three months to operationalize everything to for them to uh, start using it in their day-to-day -day process. Um, from a, um, I, I want to get to a couple of points from a, uh, like when does it make sense to do something like this? Um, if your data sources, if you have a variety of data sources, or even within your ERP or CRM system, there you're trying to connect the dots to your, you know, different customers and products, and, and sometimes it's hard to get to that that type of information. Uh, data may not be available sometimes, uh, and if you see your analysts sometimes you know, struggling and spending more time on data engineering than value creation, then you probably want to think about this kind of approach. And most importantly, you know, businesses, uh, are, they are moving fast nowadays. Uh, the tolerance for you know, projects lasting months and years is just not there. To wait for those integration efforts to complete and then you can get something 
uh, meaningful by you know, building large data warehouses or uh, integration efforts. Uh, businesses move too fast. They're, they're just, uh, you know, uh, in the business, there's not much tolerance for that, that kind of time frame anymore. Um, and sales orders are usually readily available. Uh, uh, that, that's, uh, I don't think that should be an issue for any organization. Uh, and then when you're looking to have uh, immediate insights in basically days and weeks instead of waiting for months and years. Um, and if you're just as an organization starting on a predictive analytics journey, uh, this is probably a good starting point uh, for you. Now that's when it makes sense to do. Where it, it may not make sense to do something like this is when um, it's certainly not a substitute for your long-term uh, planning. Um, so if you are on the analytics journey, uh, you got your big data sources figured out and you're set your ways, then it, it's probably not something you want to pursue. And the reason being is that uh, although this is a, a, a strategy that can get you to insights really fast, uh, but it's less targeted. Like I mentioned, it's, it's uh, you know, missing demographics and geography and other behaviors, you know, like the social media, a website, Google Analytics, and some other uh, variables that might come into play, which actually might make it more targeted uh, from a business perspective. Uh, but that's a trade-off you take, you know. Do I want to get to insights faster, but maybe I have less targeted information? Or I want to be more targeted, but then it takes longer to get there. So it depends on the organizational tolerance uh, to what, what they are uh, looking to do. Uh, and like I said, it, it, it doesn't, uh, the strategy doesn't make sense when you are uh, trying to find new customers because this is focused strictly on extracting value uh, from your existing uh, customer base. Um, how can you get started? So I, I would just say, you know, go back to your organizations. Um, your sales orders are available. Uh, I would say, you know, challenge your uh, data scientists or analysts in your team uh, and ask them, you know, is this something they can uh, help you uh, create value with? Uh, and by, you know, obviously this is, you're going to focus more on value creation rather than data engineering because data is already set for you. So. Uh, ultimately, it, it may lead you to have more revenue, improved sales quality, improved uh, approach of the sales team, and if your customer churn is an issue at your organization, it can also uh, help you with, with that. So, um, John, that's the end of my uh, presentation. Okay, uh, Vic, we've had a few questions come in you might want to take here. The first yeah. one is, uh, do you ever feel the need to add more data sources to supplement current data? Yeah, um, actually, in this case, we ended up adding data sources, uh, not data sources, but additional data fields like a sales rep. It wasn't part of the initial data field. Um, zip code, uh, customer tenure. So we, as as we as we worked on this, we we added more fields as they were, um, uh, you know, required to be added. But it wasn't a whole lot more than what we already had. But we did add a few more after the initial uh, initial run. Okay, uh, another question. What is the recommended team composition and process for success? So from a team 
composition perspective, I would say you will need somebody on your team who, who is familiar with predictive analytics, uh, who understands how to run a, a data model, how to create data models. And for overall success perspective, um, if you can show immediate results uh, with this approach uh, to your executive team and your sales and marketing team, you'll get a quick buy-in. Uh, so I would say go start working with your sales order, get some insights, and, and bring it in front of your uh, decision makers, and you'll, you'll get uh, immediate buy-in. So that's the starting point for success. Okay, well, thank you, Vic. That was very good. Uh, for more information, uh, you can reach out to Vic. Uh, you'll see his contact information on the screen right now, his email address and phone number.